right now we want to go ahead and we're heading to Troy, virtually that is. We're going to check in now. Ethan Baker, the mayor of our fine city, Troy, joining us now on the Oakland County Megacast. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday indeed. How are you both? Wonderful. We're good. Um, we're making it. It's like it's fall time already. What a shock to our systems, right? I, <laughs> I, I can't believe how quickly it turned, but I guess, you know, it's Michigan. We're used to it, but uh, it's, 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 it's been such a warm summer. It's nice to have some cool days too, I guess. I know we've been so lucky. So speaking about the weather change, are you concerned about the possibility of increased cases as the weather gets colder and more and more people are forced indoors? Yeah, sure. I guess all of us are, right? I mean, typically we start cold and flu season as the weather changes. So I expect that there will be more people that will get sick. And certainly um, as we move indoors and can't you know, spend all those nice hours out in the sun, out in the parks, um, outdoor dining, of course, is going to become an issue as the weather changes. There's going to be more people close together. So I think it'd be very curious to see if people then are more likely to not have the social gatherings because they have to be inside or if they're going to do it anyway. I mean, we'll, we'll see over time. But, you know, I think when I look around in Troy, I see people being very responsible. They're very, very careful about uh, mask wearing, you know, social distancing when they can. And, and obviously there are outliers and all of those, but the people are cautious and they're careful and I expect them to be um, as we progress into the fall. So Mayor, how are things going for the businesses there in the city of Troy, which is the low, uh, largest city here in Oakland County. Has business been picking up for them? What are you seeing and hearing from the patrons? There, There's definitely an uptick in business. People are getting back to work. Restaurants are tending to, to be a little busier than they were, say, when they first were allowed to reopen. Um, but you still have, um, you know, Troy's daytime pop, or Troy's normal population is, you know, 85, 86,000 residents. But during the day, during the week, it goes up to somewhere around 160,000, which means all those people are coming into work. And when they're not coming into our office buildings now, that's going to have a big effect on our restaurants, on our retail. And we're definitely experiencing that um, in the city of Troy. And, you know, I don't know when we'll see our office buildings filled back up, which will then allow our restaurants to be filled back up. And uh, that concerns me more than anything. Um, you hear about GM, who's had a lot of their salary workers are going to work from home until June of next year. I, I hope that's not the case for a lot of employees in the city of Troy, because we need we need the bodies to come into our city. We need people to to safely use our restaurants, use our retail. And then that that keeps a big part of our economy going here. Ethan Baker joining us from the city of Troy here on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, Ethan, we also talked to Debbie Binder, the West Bloomfield Township clerk, just before we spoke to you today as West Bloomfield's preparing my all other municipalities in Michigan and throughout the country for this upcoming election. What extra efforts are being taken in the city of Troy to help assist assist residents with an expected uh, doubling, really, of absent voter, voter turnout and overall turnout being increased in the November election? Absolutely. So we obviously we just had our August primary where we, we implemented some new systems, but the city of Troy is very well prepared for this. We have um, invested the time, money, and resources into making sure that those who want to vote can vote safely, whether it be a mail, whether it be dropping off their ballots, or in the polls on, in person on November 3rd. So we have done a number of things, and if I could just tick off, tick off a couple of them right now, I'd really appreciate it. We've got uh, four big brand new drop boxes, um, two of them at our city hall, east entrance and west entrance, one at our library, one at our community center which will be checked, they're locked of course, and checked uh, daily um, by the city clerk's office to uh, gather any new ballots, any absentee ballot um, applications or anything relating to the elections. Um, we have set up a number of drive-through clerk options, which is very unique and I think something very special that we're doing where, because there are a certain amount of the population who is still just not comfortable even really getting out of the car or going into a building. So we've set up and it worked in the August primary and now we've I've got a few dates here um, a, a drive through clerk's office where you can stay in your car and drive through our city um, hall parking lot and do everything you need to do with the city clerk's office, whether that's registering to vote, whether that's picking up an absentee ballot, whether that's then taking that ballot and then sitting in your car voting and then running it back through the line in a drop box or to hand it directly to a person. But we've got drive through clerk hours. Um, the first actually is the AV ballot pickup. Um, which is um, our ballots will be mailed in the city of Troy. If you've already requested a ballot, September 30th, 
But on Saturday and Sunday, September 26th and 27th, between 12 and 4 p.m., you can go to the city hall, the city clerks, and stay in your car, and they'll do a drive-through. You can actually get your ballot right there in person, so you don't have to worry about any of the concerns with the Postal Service. Um, and, of course, uh, safety and security requirements are in place. You have to show your ballot ID. It has to be you. You can't pick up a ballot for a spouse or a child or a parent. I guess it wouldn't be a child. It would be an 18-year-old child, at least. Um, but the city clerks will be verifying signatures and making sure that only people who are supposed to get their ballots are going to get their ballots. They can't go to anybody else. But we've got those dates in September. We've got October 14th, 21st, 24th, 30th, and the 31st also set up right now as drive through clerk hours. Um, and finally, I, I, I really, I don't want to discourage people from actually going to the polls and voting on November 3rd. All 31 of our precincts will be open. And if you feel, if you're at a lower risk, if you feel safe enough to do that, please know that our city staff and our volunteers will be there, um, properly social distance, disinfecting, cleaning, making sure you're, you have a safe place to vote on election day as well. Um, so, I mean, we've done a lot in Troy to make sure people want to vote, can vote, and can do so safely and securely. I'm a person I like to go to the polls to get my sticker and feed my ballot in myself just to make sure it's all good. Who came up with the drive through clerk office or uh, hours? Because that is, that's awesome. And do you think it will continue post pandemic? Yeah, it's a good question that it will continue, but our city clerk, Aileen Dixon, um, has been with us for quite a while and she does an excellent job. She's very innovative, you know, very dialed in with other clerks in the state. Um, she, she's just really on top of it and comes up with these great ideas. And um, I don't know if that'll stick. I have a feeling it could actually stick post pandemic because um, as we know, in 2018, we passed the no reason absentee voting anyway. So there was already going to be an increase in these absentee ballots. Um, whether the, there'll be as many hours or as many opportunities to have drive through balloting in a post-pandemic Troy, I don't know. But I would definitely like to see that continue. I think people are very comfortable and used to staying in their cars. Look at drive throughs around anywhere, and they're always full of cars. So people are familiar and comfortable with that setup, and I think it could be a good thing moving forward as well. So can we shift the conversation just a little bit and look at the budget? Are you anticipating a big shortfall going into your next budget year? Well, so uh, our budget, um, our budget started July 1st. So we're on a July to the end, June 30th budget. And uh, we um, had already locked in our property tax values for 2020 to 2021, which means that, and that's the bulk of our budget um, and our resources, our revenue that we received. So we're actually, this next cup coming fiscal year, we're mostly fine on track with where we've always been. The unknowns for us still remain what kind of state shared revenue we'll get coming out of Lansing and any Act 51 dollars for our roads. That's the, those are, you know, we haven't got those numbers from Lansing yet. And obviously the state is suffering um, financially as well. So we don't know exactly where we'll come out with that. We've got a very, very hefty rainy day fund in the city of Troy. Previous councils and city um, um, administration had made sure that we had a good policy in place post the 2008 recession. To, to make sure that if something major were to happen, we'd have um, good reserves, and we do here in Troy. So even with the shortfalls coming out of Lansing that we expect in the next year, we'll be able to cover those just fine, and you really won't see a difference in city services or spending in the city of Troy this next year. Um, if we were to have an extended recession where property values were to drop, that, would have, that could then affect our property tax revenues. Then in a year past that, two to three years from now, we could see some difficulties in Troy. Although as of right now, um, it doesn't look like property taxes or property values are dropping and it looks like we're having an economic recovery. So we should be, as of now, in good shape. We'll just have to see where we, it all plays out. Mayor Ethan Baker with us from the city of Troy. Mayor Baker, earlier on, you talked to us about the uptick in business but, but that in the city, but that you're expecting a little bit of a leveling effect as the cold months approach. A lot of municipalities locally provided some additional means, whether it be street space or sidewalk space for expansion outdoors of a lot of businesses, particularly restaurants and retail. Have there been any discussions about what the city may be able to do to help these businesses in a similar fashion in the winter months, albeit with more weather constraints in place? Absolutely. So we've looked at um, what we can do. We've got we've got a, plenty of restaurants that are using outdoor dining right now. Most of our restaurants um, were different than a city like Birmingham, who has a very compact central downtown where all of their restaurants are kind of together in the same place and 
they use you know city parking spaces for outdoor dining in the summer months anyway our restaurants in troy tend to have their outdoor dining space on private property whether that's parking lot space or their own property that they own um, so the city doesn't need to get too involved in something like that however we have looked at what birmingham's doing they're allowing um, additional outdoor seating through the winter months tempor on a temporary basis because of covid that will allow even for some partial enclosures and some heat lamps and such uh, city of troy is also looking at doing that as well i think we can actually do it without doing a zoning or ordinance change it can be done administratively but we've got that in process because i think there are a fair amount of restaurants in the city of troy who would take advantage of something like that um, so we're working with the local restaurants who may be interested in that we're working with city administration to come up with a good plan for that but yeah, that is the big concern for everybody if capacity indoor dining capacity rates are only at 50 percent uh, I don't think a lot of these restaurants can survive through the winter months without having some kind of outdoor option as well. Um, and, you know, we talked, I heard you talking just before I came on about getting into phase five. Uh, if we can get there, we can have increased indoor dining capacity as well. But until we get there, um, I really strongly feel we have to do something to help the, the restaurants and the retail who utilize outdoor services. Mayor of Troy, uh, Ethan Baker with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. When we're looking at COVID-19 in the beginning, we had a lot of issues with getting supplies. Are you still finding that or has the supply chain opened up for you and the staff and the employees there in the city of Troy? I, I don't have those difficulties any longer. Our first responders um, have plenty um, PPE, city employees who ha need them have them. Um, even, you know, Beaumont is here in Troy. Um, I understand that they're doing just fine with their PPE. So I, I think that is an issue of the past, or at least it is for our region or for our city, um, and which, you know, is a good thing. And you see now, I mean, there's masks for sale at grocery stores again, there's sanitizer again, there, you know, a lot of those things that were missing for so long are back in, in pretty regular force. So I, I think we're through the PPE hurdle, assuming we don't have a major spike again. Um, and, you know, I'd like to think that the supply chain above and beyond Troy has worked through some of those issues so they're prepared for something big if they needed to again. Mayor, if you have extra um, disinfectant spray, we'll take some here for the studio. <laughs> I always have the hardest time finding some. I got a can last week and I was excited. I felt like I hit the lotto. Yeah, I should say that, you know, the Lysol sprays, those are still kind of hard to find. Uh, the Clorox wipes, I think, are difficult. Um, but, you know, there's so good old soap and water can take care of a lot of germs and bacteria as well. Don't forget that. I know it's not as easy, but we can still clean without having to have a handy dandy canister. Or something. <laughs> that, that is a good point. That is a good point. So how are other things going in Troy? What about new businesses and construction? Any new projects that uh, that are on the forefront? We, we have a ton of new development, new construction happening in Troy still. I took a temporary you know, pause during those early initial months of the shutdown, but you know, we've got new hotels coming to Troy. We've got actually a Buddy's Pizza is coming to Troy this fall, it looks like. They're, they're almost done with their build out. Um, you know, I've got apartments, luxury apartments being built. We've got a seven story luxury apartment building with 280 units being built um, at you know, Crooks and Big Beaver and a, that major development there that really are gonna change you know, our skyline in Troy, really gonna change the, the feel and getting people walking around the Big Beaver Corridor, um, taking advantage of those restaurants and the retail, which is gonna be a great addition as well. So I feel very good about the continued development in Troy. You hear a lot from residents in Troy about how we are um, overdeveloped as it is. And there is a certain truth to that for sure. We have to be very mindful of the green space that we wanna keep and that we have. And so we don't let that go away. But um, as a reminder, you know, redevelopment and infill development is what keeps the city growing and evolving and allows us to have the things that we need when we need, you know, new libraries or when we need additional services. So um, our development is strong. Um, businesses are definitely moving in here. I just, um, obviously some have suffered, but I get emails and notifications from other people who say, hey, you know, I just got a new 100 employee tenant in my building. I just want to let you know. I mean, that kind of stuff is great for the city of Troy. It's great for the residents of Troy and it, it keeps us going. Mayor, how are things at City Hall? Are you back open to the public or is it by appointment only? Uh, City Hall is still pretty much by appointment only. Um, and we found that we really got into a good groove with that early on um, well, when we actually, first of all, we didn't initially, we didn't even take appointments. We were just having call City Hall and you could do almost anything over the phone or online, it seemed. Um, as we brought some employees back into City Hall, we're still doing it by appointment only. There are still some people, you know, we had our property taxes are due right now. 
Some prefer to pay in person. I understand that and respect that. Certainly you can mail them. Certainly you can put them in a Dropbox, but some people feel comfort of coming in and getting a receipt. And so we have that service available. Our city clerk's office has been operating pretty much at full staff because of the November, or the August election and now the November election. But um, we're, we're still by appointment only for the most part and it's working, but we are um, scaling things back up and there's more employees back in the building and you know, it, we'll get back to normal as, you know, as soon as we feel that it's ne absolutely necessary to. But until now, we haven't had the absolute need to do so on a normal basis yet. Ethan Baker, the mayor of the fine city of Troy. And before we let you go, you know, I have to ask about Somerset. I it was is. waiting. I didn't know when you were going to ask. Well, I'm a shopper, I will say. Uh, I've been in there recently, and it seems like business is picking back up for a lot of the stores, but we are also seeing some stores uh, shut their doors. For sure. Um, Somerset, obviously, I, I'm, I'm partial. I think they've done a great job of providing a safe and clean atmosphere for people to shop. And it's been, you know, it's a draw for people anyway. But you see nationally, even some of the bigger stores or bigger brand names are closing. So that's going to affect Somerset as well. Um, and we do have some that aren't going to make it. And, you know, we have others that are moving in. Um, so it's that's a cycle a little bit. It's hard to see people um, lose their jobs at Somerset or lose the, the businesses that they've worked for. Um, but it, it is part of the economy and uh, Somerset seems to be doing pretty well. And, um, you know, I think it always it always will. Yeah, the restaurants have uh, definitely seem to be busy over there at Somerset. So, Mr. Mayor, anything that we didn't touch on that you want to get out to our listeners and our viewers? Well, you know, today is 9-11. Um, I'm, uh, I'm sure it's been said 100 times already today, but, you know, I, I really want everyone to never forget. And it's important, you know, I have three young kids who are born after 9-11, and I think it's important for us and our generation to make sure the younger generation knows what 9-11 was about, what happened. And I like to tell my kids who are getting a little older now that I, I you know, this, some of it's very scary, obviously, so you have to be careful with the children. But I always like to talk about the first responders who were running into the buildings when everybody else was running out because that was the kind of good service they were doing and they were there to help people. And I think it's important to remember and never forget those first responders who sacrificed their lives um, to, to try to save others. And that's very, 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 very important. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, 19 years, I can't believe it's been that long, but um, the other, about 9-11, the other, semi-interesting fact, if, if you can call it that, is that um, Troy, um, the city of Troy, a police officer in Troy lost his life on September 11th, 2001, but he was here in Troy. Um, officer Charles Mullenhill, he um, he was out on a service call and had a heart attack and passed away. So I always remember that, you know, when you talk about 9-11 as the national scene and, you know, what happened in New York, what happened in Shanksville, Pennsylvania and the Pentagon, but, you know, there's real local stories for everybody too. And for the Mullenhill family, they lost they lost office in Mobile Hill on that day as well. So 9-11 is always a day to be remembered here in Troy and the nation. And um, I hope that we truly do never forget. Yeah, I think it's hard this year, too, because we're not able to have those memorial services that we typically are used to having here uh, throughout the country. Uh, you know, I know I've attended a lot here locally as well. So thank you, though, for sharing that. And it's always a good reminder, um, as we talked about earlier Tyler was young, he was in first grade. And it's like you said, when we're older, we know we remember that day and we feel those feelings. And the one thing that came out of 9-11 was a lot of love and unity. So maybe we can get back to that right now, right? Well, I, you, you're so right. I, you, you, you put words in my mouth or you, you took the words right out of my mouth. I, I just posted on my social media a little bit before this about how the other important lesson of that is how unified we were as a country right after that. and. My kids are growing up in such a divisive and a partisan and you know ugly time in many ways, right? And and I, I always try to tell them, look, we, it doesn't always have to be like that, and it won't always be like that. So we we can unify and come together, and and we will again. It's just, you know, times are tough sometimes in these things, and uh, we'll get through that and come back stronger. And I think we can unify again when necessary, which is another important lesson. Definitely. Well, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Absolutely. It was great to talk to you both.